Hello fellow hobbyists, welcome back to another video. Uh, I'm going to be making a lot of them this weekend just so I can get some editing done. Hopefully I can get some of these posted during the week. The new Magic the Gathering set, Core 21, has become available. Check your local game and hobby store. I've seen a few spoilers for this, but I have to say I am pretty excited for a core set. Looks like we might have some fun. I haven't seen the full set list yet. So part of this is going to be exploration. And then, of course there's going to be some nostalgia. I'm pretty sure when I see some of these cards. So let's get to cracking. This might be a pretty lengthy video because it's several booster packs. One thing that I just noticed, it was really easy for me to pop open that end. So I'm curious. Alright, so that one feels like it was glued a little bit better. But this one popped open at the top really easy. It didn't even feel like it was sealed. Let's see what that means. Well, the first few packs, I'm going to go through some of the individual cards here, just so we can all take a look at them. Also, so I can read them myself. Let's see what we get. I do know straight away I have already opened up one of the pre-release packs. And for some reason, the booster packs in that had the token and then the rare on top. This appears to be, yeah, inverted. And I've heard uh, on from other YouTube channels and websites that the pre-release packs are packaged in Japan. Uh, but I haven't followed that up with my own research yet. Uh, but it does make sense they are uh, packaged somewhere else and created somewhere else. Read the tides. Blue and five. So six mana, sorcery. Uh, you can either draw three cards or return to two target creatures to their owner's hands. The artwork is nice. I'm not a big fan of blue, but six to draw three. That's two mana a card. That's not too bad, but as a sorcery, blue usually needs to move a little bit faster, so I'm not sure how good that's going to be. Destructive tampering. Red and two. Choose one. Destroy target artifact. Creatures thought flying can't block this turn. That could be really good to get a large attack in. And I like how both those cards give you choices, so it's not just like, here's what the card does. You have some options. Secure the scene. White and four. Exile target non-land permanent. This controller creates a one-one white soldier creature token. <laughs> so the soldier is locking something down. I like the flavor of that. Oh, they brought cancel back. Three mana to counter target spell. I, I'm still not a fan of counter spells. Uh, one of the best counter spells that I've seen is Rewind. It's four mana. Uh, yeah, it, it pays for itself because you get to untap up to four lands after casting it. However, you need to have the four mana in order to cast it so it doesn't disrupt the early game. It doesn't disrupt other players' board setup. Uh, it takes place later in the turn so that you cancel some of the larger stuff, but it doesn't disrupt their game flow. Uh, original Counterspell, you could do that on turn two. So if you went first, you'd have your two islands and you would counter like the first thing your opponent did. And it was never fun playing under that sort of stress that early in the game. You want to be able to play with your cards. Council, um, at three mana, I still think it's a little too early. I think four mana is fine for a Counterspell, even if it gives you the mana back. It just allows the early board setup so that you can play the game. Sure, your bigger stuff may be canceled later on, but yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of counter spells that can happen in turns one through three. Citizen Training. Green and one. Chain creature you control. Where's the battlefield? Draw a card. Chain creature gets plus one plus zero and has trample. Not bad. Not bad. Not rocking the world. Blood Glutton. Black and four. Lifelink. Four threes. Pretty generic creature. Oh, what do we have here? This looks like one of those alternate borders. 
I've heard about. I like that. I'd love to see one of these in foil. Basri's Acolyte Cat Cleric. Wait, wait, to this. I love that Magic is doing more alternate borders, full art. I mean, make the make the game beautiful. I mean, why not? You know, I mean, the, the game has always been beautiful. I am I was playing back uh, with Revives when Fallen Empires was just coming out. Um, around Mirage, I stopped playing, and I dip back in every now and then. I'll play Commander occasionally. But, I mean, yeah, why, why not make your game look as beautiful as possible? Change it up. Do unique cards. So four for a two, three, lifelink. Love the artwork. When Basri's Acolyte enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 counter on each of up to two other target creatures you control. I like that. Kind of like a bard cleric -y buff. I like he's casting Bless on people. Infernal Scarring, black and one, enchant creature. Enchant creature gets plus two, plus zero, and has when this creature dies, draw a card. Roaming Ghost Light. I'm going to have to make that into a D&D &D monster if it's not already. That just sounds great. Roaming Ghost Light. Yeah, some people out there are probably saying, uh, well, that's just a Will of the Wisp. No, it's a Roaming Ghost Light. Completely different. Uh, blue, blue, three, three, two. When it enters the battlefield, return up to one target non-spirit creature to its owner's hand. It's not bad. I could see people using this with a lot of the blink effects that are available in the game. Blue shot, pretty standard. Red for two damage. Sanctum of Tranquility, Shrine. White to put out. Legendary enchantment, only one in play at a time. White five, tap target creature. This ability costs one less to activate for each shrine you control. So it doesn't say each other, it's just each shrine. So it would be white and four because of itself. Hmm. Witch's Cauldron. Aquarian Dryad. Green and one for a 1-1. One, one. I'm not sure I like that in green. Green is usually low cost, high power. Whenever you cast a spell that's white, blue, black, or red, so any of the other colors, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Um, that could be pretty neat. Baneslayer Angel. 5 for a 5 5. Flying, first strike, lifelink, protection from demons and from dragons. I'm surprised it stops there. I mean, I was on a roll. Give me more keywords. And then a tranquil grove. Thank you for advertising more of your game to a game I'm already buying. <laughs> I've actually sent a letter to Wizards of the Coast. Um, I usually send one at least once a year. Uh, I email them, let them know an idea. If you're going to have, in your booster packs, these advertisement tokeny cards, why can't you use this to make um, proxy cards? Yeah, I know you have your reserved list with your dual lands and things like that. A lot of us casual players cannot afford to buy dual lands for our commander decks. So... Why can't you just, you know, have your advertisement and then on the other side, as a token, uh, reprint poxy cards? You, know, you do like a blue border to them, and then you just do dual lands as tokens. They're not going to be tournament legal because, you know, the backs aren't magic and they have blue borders. So it would allow us casual people to get these tokens. Because even if you look at like the collector edition cards, they're almost just as expensive as the normal ones. And you can't use those in tournaments. So uh, j just give us tokens of proxies for some of the older cards. It would be great. I would love you forever. It would be amazing. More cancel. Hobble Fiend. Let's take a look at this guy. Red one for a 2-1. Trample. You pay one, sacrifice another creature, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Hobble Fiend. I'm probably never going to play that guy, at least as far as I can tell right now. I need something that can attack, attack, attack uh, in red. Gloom Sower. That's another thing I'm probably going to have to turn into a D&D &D monster. Gloom Sower. I just love the name of that. Whoever came up with some of these names, 
Bravo. Good job. I love the flavor. Let's read the flavor anyway. First, the darkness fell. Terror came next. After that, only despair remained. Excerpt from the Tragedy of Maureen. I like it. I don't even need to read anything else. Yeah, I see. Seven for an eight, six. I don't even know what that does. I just love the name, the picture, and the flavor text. And it's all horror. I haven't seen a horror for a while. When it becomes blocked by a creature, that creature's controller loses two life and you gain two life. That is amazing. And by amazing, I mean flavorful, fun. I'm, I'm going to have to make some decks around this guy. Ranger's Guile. I think I remember seeing this and uh, there was an old werewolf set. I think that's where this was originally from. Uh, green, target creature you control gets plus one, plus one, and gains hexproof until end of turn. Pretty standard for green. Wish coin crab. That's <laughs> just Moana. Um, blue and three for a two five. It's pretty generic, pretty standard. But you know what? If you want to make a Moana theme deck, Wish coin crab. Gale Swooper. That's another awesome name. That'd be a great name for like your special griffin mount in D&D. Gale Swooper. To me, Gale Swooper. Uh, white and three for a three two. Flying. When Gale Swooper enters the battlefield, target creature gains flying until end of turn. Yeah, that's, I'm, I kind of wish, um, if they were going to make mount cards like this, which is the flavor they're going for, I'm pretty sure there's some way that they could like soul bound or couple up so that when this comes into play, you know, a creature, it, it binds itself to a particular other creature and that's the one that carries it around. So that creature would get flying and this creature would probably get like, I don't know, first strike or vigilance or something like that. I see what they're going for. I just wish they could implement it in a more thematic way. What do we got here? Life goes on. Green. Instant. Good so far. You gain four life. If a creature died this turn, you gain eight life instead. That could be, forgive the pun, a lifesaver. I mean, a green for four, that's going to outpace. I mean, look at shock. It's a red for two. Bear in mind, shock can kill a creature. But this can keep you afloat for just that extra turn longer. As you're playing creatures, those creatures are going to die. Especially if you're going to block, not take damage, and then boom, gain eight. It's better than a fog in some cases. Uh, Duress, red. I remember this card. Uh, target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-creature, non-land card from it. That player discards that card. Rousing Reed. Oh yeah, I heard there was going to be like a library theme to a lot of blue cards in Core 21. I usually play in D&D a lot of bards that love to look for old books and tomes when we go to dungeons. I even take Mending usually as one of my cantrips and a Mage Hand just so I can move things around delicately and repair them so that they don't crumble to dust. Blue and two, Enchantment Aura. Enchant Creature. When Rousing Reed enters the battlefield, draw two cards, then discard a card. All right, yeah, that's not bad. Jane Creature gets plus one, plus one, and has flying. All right, so for three, uh, you're boosting your creature, one, one, and flying. And you're uh, basically helping to sift through your deck. You're drawing two and getting rid of a card. Doesn't have to be one of the cards that you drew. You just get rid of a card. All right, that's not bad. Sky Scanner. Three, one, one. It's a Thopter. Hmm, I know some Thopter fans out there are going to be happy to see this. Flying, when Sky Scanner enters the battlefield, draw a card. I mean, card draw wins games. That's pretty much true in any card game out there that's ever been. Card draw wins games. Traitorous Greed. I love the dragon that's on there. Traitorous Greed is just a great name for a dragon card. Red and three. Gain control of target creature until end of turn. On tap that creature, it gains haste until end of turn. Add two mana of any one color. All right, so you need the initial four investment, but you're going to be getting two mana back. It's not bad. 
It's a sorcery, so you can only do it on your turn, so you can't negate an attack coming your way. But you do get to attack with that creature. Tide Skimmer. Sounds like a Star Wars vehicle. Tide Skimmer. Blue 3, flying. Whenever you attack with two or more creatures with flying, draw a card. It shouldn't be too difficult in blue. A lot of stuff in blue has flying. Uh, if you make a blue-white deck, that shouldn't be any trouble at all. So again, card draw wins games. Thrashing Bronzodon, he destroys artifacts, right? I think I remember seeing this guy before. Yep, some commander players play this guy. One, sacrifice and destroy target artifact or enchantment. I mean, three for a three, four is just good value anyway. A lot of people are fans of dinosaurs, and you get to pop him when you need to to destroy a pesky artifact or enchantment. Sugira, Tuziti Caravana. All right, so we got a red and two for a two, three. That's not bad value. Uh, human Shaman, so it'll fit in human decks, human builds. Uh, we got haste, so two, three for haste for three. <laughs> but there's more stuff. Uh, one, another target creature with power two or less can't be blocked this turn. It doesn't hit itself, but you can get uh, your smaller creatures in. Red one tap, discard your hand until the end of turn. Whenever a creature you control with power two or less deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. I'm gonna say it right now, this is a really good card. Um, red always has, historically, mind, I'm not sure how things are in the tournament scene anymore. Uh, red has always had an issue of burning through their hand really quickly and then relying on top deck. This is really good. <laughs> Unfortunately, it has to be combat damage, but she allows them uh, to get through. So she can just sit in the back and let your guys in. You're going to be doing a little bit of damage, but you get to restock your hand for either more creatures, more burn. Uh, that's why so many cards out there um, usually go into red that make them draw cards. Back in the day, it was Howling Mine. I mean, red decks would run four Howling Mines. Yeah, it helped your opponent, but it was the only way you could keep cards in your hand. That is really good. And then we got the uh, lands and tokens. And you see, I mean, the tokens, they're always going to have, like, advertisements. We know Jumpstart's coming out. I mean, it's, you have to advertise. But instead of the 500,000th night that I probably have, why don't you just take a set, like, I mean, Jumpstart or Modern Horizons or Double Masters or whatever, a specialty set. And for your tokens, just do, you know, proxy cards. Everyone would love it. They're not tournament legal. It's not going to impact the sale prices for people who need those high-end cards for legacy tournaments. And it will allow casual players to, you know, make better decks. They, they could ha have the sense of, here's my underground seat. It's blue border. Everyone's going to know it's a proxy. Most casual players print up proxies anyway. So just, just give us proxies that are company made that you know, are on that firm card stock that are gonna be quality. We, we would love you for it. Wizards, get right on that. <laughs> All right, next pack, Concordia Pegasus. Two for a one, three flyer. Spined Megalodon, seven, oof. For a five, seven, hex proof, whenever it attacks, scry one. You know, five seven, that's pretty beefy. It's probably going to survive a couple of attacks or two. But if you're paying seven in blue, um, I think you need more than just scry one <laughs> at that point. If you're paying seven for that, it's a pretty good sealed card, I believe. I mean, but even then, yeah, it's pretty much just for a limited play, like sealed and draft. Of course, now that I've said that, you. Yes, you. I'm talking to you right now. I know you're going to try and make a deck to break Spined Megalodon. I would like to see that. Get right on that. Goblin Wizardry. Well, this, this has got to be chaotic. Red and three. Create two, one, one red Goblin Wizard creature tokens with prowess. And whenever you cast a non-creature spell, the creature gets plus one, plus one to one a turn. 
I was expecting something a little bit more uh, chaotic, more, more crazy, with goblin wizardry and it being an instant. But, you know, we get two wizards that just, they zazz up on magic. They get juiced on magic. Feet of resistance. White and one, instant. Put a 1-1 one -one counter on target creature you control. It gains protection from the color of your choice until the end of turn. You can't really see me playing this a whole lot outside of limited. Bear in mind, it would be fun to have this in a commander deck and just... No, no, <laughs> I can't think of anything. Uh, Liliana Stewart. Jason? Buddy, you're doing some good work these days. I love it. Keep it up. Uh, your mausoleum um, cards, the, the Cthulhu artwork that you had coming out. Can't wait for them. Uh, so if anyone hasn't uh, become a fan of Jason Engel, please check out his artwork. Amazing. There are a lot of little subtle nods in this. Go to his Facebook page. Uh, check out his other sites. Um, really take an in-depth look into this piece of artwork. I was kind of hoping to get this card. Next time I see you, come into your booth. I need you to sign this. Liliana Stewart. Black for a 1-2. Zombie. It's a Liliana card. Did we expect anything else besides the zombie? You tap. Sacrifice him. Target opponent discards a card. Activates his ability any time you could cast a sorcery. It's not bad. One for a one-two that doesn't come into play tapped. You all know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, it's a pretty good zombie. Amazing artwork. Servants at Vess Manor are chosen for their strong work ethic and respectful demeanor. Being alive is not required. <laughs> Kudos to the flavor department and magic. Knocking it out of the park. Drowsine Pteranodon. Two for a 3-3. Three, three. It's a defender because it's asleep. I love it. Uh, as long as you control a creature with power 4 or greater, this guy can attack as though it didn't have defender. So there's some big creature stomping around and keeps waking him up. I love it. I want more cards like this. Stat. Hunter's Edge. Green and three. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control. Then that creature does damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. Alright, so uh, I, I think there used to be like a fight mechanic, but creatures would damage each other. This looks like it's just one-way damage. Sorcery, though. Not sure how much I like that. Wall of Runes. I guess that could probably fit to the library theme. We've got a blue for... An 04 wall. When Wall of Runes enters the battlefield, scry one. It's not bad for a blue. It's a pretty good defender. Allows you to get on your feet. Build your resources. Swift response. Boot to the face. <laughs> yeah. Wrestling fans, you know what I'm talking about. Um, white and one. Destroy target tapped creature. Hurt Ogre. Red 3, 4 3, Reach. You know, I'd love to see more. You know, Giants should have Reach. All, like, Ogres and Giants should have Reach. Uh, when Turret Ogre ends the battlefield, if you control another creature with power 4 or greater, Turret Ogre deals 2 damage to each opponent. You know, not, not a flashy card, but definitely something that you might be able to run in a red deck in Commander. All right, what do we have here? Sanctum of Shattered Heights, another shrine. Red two, legendary enchantment. One, discard a land or shrine card. Sanctum of Shattered Heights deals X damage to our creature or planeswalker where X is the number of shrines you control. All right, so there's some sort of shrine theme going on. Gonna need more of those. More vampires. Indulging Patrician. Black, white, one for a one, four flyer. Lifelink, that's a vampire. Of course, it's probably going to have flying and lifelink. What else we got? At the beginning of your end step, if you gain three or more life this turn, each opponent loses three life. Hello, Commander Deck. I love, like, the Vampire Hunter D artwork that's going on back there. 
Who did this? Miranda Meeks. Let's just get that name up there. Miranda Meeks. Awesome job. Way to go. Love it. Watsy, hire, hire them to do more. Just a nibble for now. I wouldn't want to ruin my appetite. <laughs> Great. Love it. Leaf can Avenger. It's like a bad 80s comic book. Uh, green, red, two, four, three, elemental druid. Tap at a green for each creature you control with power four or greater. Red seven, leaf can avenger, deals damage equal to its power to target player or planeswalker. I love that it's a lot more planeswalker targeting. Uh, doesn't hit a creature, however, that's very interesting. Just player or planeswalker. Oh, that's nice artwork. Karvik, the Spiteful. Two black two, three two. Other creatures get minus one, minus one. It's legendary, so you can't have multiples out. But you know what? Your human warlock could fit into you know, a human build that uses black. I don't know if there's any out there. Beautiful artwork. Great stat and ability. Very flavorful. Speaking of which, Defy me, and I will burn the flesh from your bones. Betray me, and I will steal the breath from your lungs. I imagine that's what Kervik with the Spiteful would sound like. It's definitely something someone Spiteful would say. You know what? This needs to be an NPC. Watsy, give me NPC stats for D&D. Gotta have them. This guy. Villain of a campaign right there. Construct, it's a neat little kind of Ultronish construct artwork going on there. And just because I don't want this video to go a little too long, we're now going to start speed up. I'll finish this one stack, and then I'll put out another video, a stack each, just so we can have time to look through these, have fun with them, see what we got. Lofty Denial, that's got to be a counter spell of some sort, counter target spell. Unless the controller pays one. If you control a creature with a flying, counter that spell, unless the controller pays four instead. You know, not bad, but again, usually early game, everyone's going to be tapping out at least until turn four. Um, so it's basically two to counter a spell. Not a big fan. Igneous Kerr. It's a doggy. Elemental doggy. Doggy on fire. Uh, some dogs just aren't meant to be indoor pets. They are not. They are not. Valorous Steed. Okay, when it enters the battlefield, create a 2-2 white knight creature token with vigilance. Unfortunately, it doesn't, like, soul bind them so that you don't have, like, a, a steed and melt. But, you know, it's, mm, see what you're going for. It's got to be a more flavorful way to enact that. Oh, Crypt Lurker. Horror. This is very Lovecraftian right here. Four for a three four. When enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice a creature or discard a creature card. If you do, draw a card. Not bad. Card drawn black. And you get a decent creature. It's a horror. Can your mind contain it? Even the rats refuse to set foot inside. I fear to think what might be waiting there. Gravedigger's journal. Did we ever see the gravedigger again? No. No, we did not. Truffle Snout! Alright, so we got uh, 3 for a 2-2. Two, two. Alright, so it's got to have some neat abilities. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. So 3 for a 3-3. Three, three. That's not bad. Uh, or 3 for a 2-2 two, two and gain 4 life. Yep. Yeah. I love choices. I love options. Cards that give me options are good. Finishing Blow. 4. Instant. Destroy target creature or planeswalker. What's that? You're about to ultimate? Yeah, that 5 mana debt. Bye bye, please, Walker. Short sword. Looks like standard equipment. Goblin arsonist. Red for a 1 1. When it dies, you may have it deal 1 damage to any target. Daybreak charger. Look at this guy. This thing is like from Rainbow Bright here. This is amazing. White and 1 for a 3 1. When Daybreak charger enters the battlefield, the target creature gets plus 2, plus 0 until end of turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no not the best thing in the world, but... Uh, Griffin Airy. Have me your end step. 
you get three more life this turn, create a 2 2 Griffin. Heart Fire Immolator. Conclave Mentor. Nice artwork. Primal Might. Target creature control gets plus X, plus X. So green, and then pay what you want. Uh, then it fights up to one target creature you don't control. Yeah. So it's basically, if, it, if I got a creature out, it's green targeted removal. What the jolly St. Nicholas. Okay. <laughs> That's a, a Watsy, good on you. This is amazing. Like alternate frame basic lands. Was not expecting that. Was not expecting that at all. I'm a Liliana token, uh, but you know that that's that's beautiful right there. Imagine having that in foil. That's a steal your breath away. I'm glad we took our time on that one because I would have just oh it's a land let me just throw it away. Um, so always take your time, uh, folks. Don't just crack the pack. Go to the rare, get your rare, but throw everything else away. Of course, now I want to see. Land. No, it's one of those stupid little dual land things. I want more of those alternate basic lands. Read the Tines. We've already seen. Already seen Alpine Watchdog. Anybody who's a dog fan out there, there's apparently a bunch of dogs in this. They've gone back and edited some of the old hound cards to make them dogs. Just look at those little puppers. Look at that fluffy little puppers. It's just a fluffy, fluffy, fluffy again. All right, so we got white. One for a 2-2, two, two, not bad. So two for a 2-2, two, two, Vigilance. On the eighth day, a blizzard hit. Supplies were lost. And morale plummeted. On the ninth day, Dover found us. The sleeping... It's the sleeping dinosaur. Don't wake him. Sanguine indulgence. That means they're drinking a lot of blood. It's going to translate for everybody. <laughs> Black and three sorcery. This spell costs three less to cast if you've gained three or more life this turn. Returns two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. I figured once they were empty, they were they were done. Apparently not. Rookie mistake. Blue until end of turn. Target creature gets plus zero, plus two, and another target creature gets minus two, minus zero. I guess it couldn't have been the other way around because you could have killed something with the uh, toughness reduction. But still, you know, it's a four power swing and allow one of your creatures to survive by blocking. Another doggy. Look at his tongue hanging out. Look at that little guy. Ruff, 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 ruff. I'm coming. Uh, white for a 1-1. One, one. Sacrifice selfless savior. Another target creature you control gains indestructible until end of turn. I would have liked to have seen this be um, target creature because of what? Yes, I, I'm going to save you. I'm going to save you in a planeswalker. But no, he can't, unfortunately. Uh, but he should have been able to save a planeswalker. I mean, one for a 1-1. One, one, uh, cute little tongue-flapping doggy. He should have been able to save planeswalkers. That's all I'm saying. Just flavor-wise, I don't, I don't know if that would have been too broken power-wise, but there's a doggy. Make them valorous. They can save planeswalkers. Uh, discard it. Planeswalkers are people, too. Uh, discard a card, tap season to hollow blade. It gains indestructible until end of turn. Infinite blocker, as long as you have cards in hand, it's pretty good. Of course, if I remember correctly, if he taps as a blocker, he doesn't do damage. Unless they change that. That tells you how old I am. I can't remember if that's changed or not. Warden of the Woods. Make a nice little treant NPC in d, &D. Most everything I see I'm going to try and convert to... D and D. That's primarily what I play. In fact, I get uh, one inch and two inch hole punches, and I take my leftover magic cards and I make NPC tokens of those. Uh, I just get like a wooden disc or a plastic disc and just glue it right on. One inch, two inch. Warden of the Woods, green, green four, vigilance five seven. When it becomes a target of spell or ability to put it controls, you may draw two cards. It's not bad. Gives you a card draw option. All right, I've, I've seen this preview. Um, I'm not going to talk much about it, with the exception of... Well, let's bring this up here. What happened to the moon? 
only because there are cards out there uh, like Blood Moon. Uh, what, what happened to the world's moon in that? Is that something that happened in canon? Is this plane's moon utterly destroyed? I don't know. All right. <laughs> Let's try and get through this stack, and then we'll make a video for the next stack, just because I don't want to bore you all. I know my comments get a little crazy and zany sometime. I'm not a big reactionary. Goblin Wizardry. All right. We're starting to see some of the same... Oh, turn to slag. Reminds me of Terminator. Uh, red, red, three. Turn to slag deals five damage to target creature. Destroy all equipment attached to that creature. You know, you're getting one more damage for the mana. So it's just greater than a, a one for one. Uh, I don't count the first one. Um, if you do count the first one, then it is one for one. But being able to destroy all the equipment attached to target creature... That's amazing. I really like that. I can see this going in as meta options into commander decks that run red. Just because there are some Voltron commander builds out there. And just being able to... Boop, sorry. Bye-bye all equipment. Um, could be very helpful. Shh. It's a running joke. <laughs> Silent Dart. Looks very flavorful. Well, we got one, four tap, sacrifice it to deal three damage to target creature. More powerful than uh, a dart should be. Darts are mainly used as distractions, not as killing machines. But, you know, it doesn't come into play tap, so if you've got the five mana and you're not running red, you, you can do three damage to something. Just a creature, though, not a planeswalker. <laughs> Uh-oh, I see a foil back there. It's just the way I hold cards. Siege Striker! Uh, three for a 1-1. One, one. Double strike, not bad. Whenever it attacks, you may tap any number of untapped creatures you control. It gets plus one, plus one to turn for each creature tapped this way. Pretty good. He can take down a lot if you have creatures behind him. With that double strike? Yep. Malefic Scythe. And there's Battlefield with a soul counter on it. What do they do? It's only two. This thing has uh, equipped creature gets plus one plus one for each soul counter on it. All right. Whenever equipped creature dies, put a soul counter on it. All right. So it's like a thin on blade from D and D. If uh, you're playing fourth edition or fifth edition, you might know what a thin on blade is. If you're from third edition or three five, definitely know. It's like a star metal that if uh, you're holding the weapon that it's made of, or if you're wearing the thin on metal uh, item and you die, your soul goes sucked into it. Solemn Simulacrum. Brought him back. Alright, he's a stable. He's a rare. Um, I don't know why such a stable commander card would be a rare, but I guess they had to do that to keep his price up. I mean, is he even really expensive anymore? Why make him a rare? I feel like he should be an uncommon at this point. If not a common. I mean, it's Solemn. Ooh, foil rare. Leniana's standard bear. I love standard bears. Most miniatures that I get or characters that I make, I have to have a standard bear. It's just fun to see a huge flag on the battlefield. Three for a 3 1 zombie knight. Might be able to put him in my knight deck. Flash, when Liliana Standard Bear enters the battlefield, draw X cards where X is the number of creatures that died under your control this turn. And it's got Flash. You know what? He's definitely going to my uh, knight commander build. Just because I love being able to have something that counters board white, because everyone runs board white. You have to, in Commander. And how can you get back from board white? Refilling your hand. Um, or playing a card immediately at the end of the turn that brings back everything that died that turn. Yeah, I know board wipe is necessary to clear the battlefield, but you know what? People want to play with their cards. You just spent 30 minutes building your board state, and then someone wanted to board wipe. Not having it. This guy. This guy right here. 3 for a 3 1. He's a knight. He's a zombie. And he refills your hand. Uh, that's a basic lane. And of course, look at this. Wasted opportunity here, wizards. Oh, 
we at at this point? Are we at like an hour long video? I thank you everybody for sticking around. I'm going to try and move a little bit quicker here. Make sure the Italian aunt. Demonic Embrace. Three enchant creature. Enchant creature gets plus three plus one, has flying as a demon in addition to its other types. Okay. Uh, you may cast Demonic Embrace from your graveyard by paying three life and discarding a card in addition to paying its other costs. That's just that's just amazing. I like that. You can always make a pact. Bravo. And of course there's an angel token. Uh, in the pack with it. Do, 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 You know what, what else is, I thank everyone for sticking around. What else is, uh, everyone going to do with their time today? You know, let's all crack some packs. You're probably cracking some on your own. Sabertooth Mauler. It's a cat. Cats are another one of the big creature types. I'm really looking forward to jumpstart so I can open up like a dog and a cat booster. Ooh, I love that artwork. It's very um, Valkyrian. Valkyrie. White and two for a two one flying non creature spells cost one more to cast. Take that, blue decks. Oh, or red decks. Nice. I really like that. It's not a knight. But I might have to put it into my night deck. That's just it's, I think it's really good. It's flavorful, it's beautiful. Faith's fetters. Liliana's devotee. Kitty cat! A feed line. Sovereign. A green and a two for a two three. Other cats you control and get a plus one a plus one and have protection from dogs. Whenever one or more cats you control deal combat damage to a player, destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment that player controls. Dogs beg. Cats lay claim. Hmm. Shallow and pedantic. <laughs> Everybody's either on lockdown, just getting back to work. We all got some spare time, you know. We just have fun with free time we got. Pride Malkin. I wonder if that's his jellicle name. Uh, so we got a green and two for a two one. When Pride Malkin enters the battlefield, put a one one counter on target creature you control. Each creature you control with a 1 1 counter on it has trample. That seems pretty good in my book. Uh oh. It looks like we got an alternate border back there. It's just the way that I hold the cards. They just rust in that little fanning cradle. Grasp of Darkness. Target creature gets minus 4, minus 4 into a turn. For 2 black, 2 that basically kills anything, 4 toughness or less. Instant. This is really good. Look forward to this coming out in um, some decks. Ooh, look at that. that's nice. That's nice. Beautiful design. Two for a two-two elemental dog. Chandra's Magmut. Tap. Deals one damage to target player or planeswalker. Thank you. If it can hit a player, hit a planeswalker. If it can hit a creature, should be able to hit a planeswalker. Why it can't hit a creature, I don't know. But you know what? I'll take it. With a beautiful frame like that, worth it. Although no flavor text. Why not? Why can't he have flavor text? Boot to the face! Furious Rise. Carrion Grub. That looks like something out of uh, Dark Heresy, the 40k role playing game. There were a lot of places in the Underhives that you did not want to go. Because there were these weird sewer grub things that would fall on your head and like work their way into your brain. Waker of Waves. 
That dude can eat. Uh, seven for seven seven. Creatures your opponents control get minus one, minus zero. That's a neat blanket ability. It's a whale. Having a good time. Having a good time. Discard Waker of Waves. Look at the top two cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand and the other into your graveyard. Hmm. Uh, just because I haven't really played a whole lot recently, um, discard Waker Waves. Does that mean you can do this ability from your hand? Otherwise it would have said sacrifice him, right? If he was in play? Huh. Weird. Pack leader! More doggies. I'm getting all the doggies. Ain't you jealous? Two for two two. Other dogs you control get plus one plus one. Whenever pack leader attacks, prevent all combat damage that will be dealt this turn to dogs you control. Gonna lead all the dogs to victory. Look, there they are. All around them. Ready for it. And just a plain mountain. Saffirling. That means there's something in this set that makes saffirlings. The magic is now gone. Opening packs. That's what we're doing today. Crash through. Concordia Pegasus. Citizen Training. Sorry about the flipping sound that you hear. Um, me and my family we used to play uh, rummy and hearts and spades and all sorts of card games uh, over Christmas breaks. And I just picked up that habit from my mom. She would hold on to her cards so that she could, we call it flopping out when we played Rummy. Uh, she wouldn't play anything that anyone could build off of. She would sit there and she would hold her cards and draw and discard and draw and discard and things like that until she could go flip, 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 flip. <laughs> it's just a, the flipping is just a little habit I've picked up. I've never been able to get rid of it. It's just that I don't even know how I do it thinking about it. It's just flip. Riddle form. That should be a spell in D&D. Uh, &D. We got Polymorph. Give me phew, Riddle form. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you may have Riddle form become a 3-3 Sphinx creature with flying in addition to its other types to end a turn. Uh, but just by default, you can pay three to scry one. It's always good to have a scry ability. Um, that way you can kind of field what you're going to draw. I need more lands. All right, let me get rid of what I don't need. Uh, being able to get a creature when you need it, not that bad. Twin Blade Assassins. Baron Tolarian Archmage. Love the artwork. Looks like he's got a lot of abilities. I would expect nothing less from blue. A blue deck. Legendary Creature Wizard should have a lot of words on it. That's just how they are. That's how wizards roll. They carry books and things. Of course they're going to use a lot of words. There is no age at which you stop learning. I mean, that's just, that's just truth right there. A normal basic land. Why even print normal basic lands anymore? Just give us all the good basic lands, unique lands. But again, I guess if you did that, they wouldn't be uh, special or unique. Staunch shield mate. Ornery. Ornery the life of soul. Masked Blackguard. Really expensive ability. Not sure how good it's going to be. It's two for a two one with flash. You would expect it to have something like death touch instead of a lame pump ability. I mean, that would be neat. Two. Whew, put him out. Get to block. He kills whenever he's blocking. And then he dies as well. Yeah, he's just an expendable death machine. But no, they gave him some sort of weird pump ability. Warded Battlements. Defender. Attacking creatures you control get plus one, plus zero. Might have to put this in my night deck. I want to see what this looks like in foil. I think those emblems and that light radiating out over the parapet would look really good as a foil version. So I'm going to have to track a foil one down. 
In dire times, even a place of refuge can become a weapon of war. Land of War Visionary, 3422. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Tap, add a green. It is a common, but I don't think it's going to have a place in a pauper elf deck, just because the cost might be a little too prohibitive of that. Pauper elf decks tend to want all the low cost creatures, at most two cost. I don't think it runs too many three cost. Fuhrer of Bitten. Prismite. Ah, oh, it's a mana converter. Gormand. Not bad. Okay, this just, I love the greens in this with the, that, the streaks of the, the yellow for the highlight with the light coming through. Who did this? Let's take a look. Brian Sola. Brian Sola, good job on that. Beautiful piece of art. Wildwood Scourge. And again, great name. Watsy, I need this as a monster you know, stat. Give me stats. <laughs> Uh, give me a layer, too. This guy should have a layer effect. Or gal. Really can't tell. Might be all of them. Might be all of the above. Different heads in there. Different personalities. Wildwood Scourge enters the battlefield with X11 counters on it. Just pay what you want. That's what you get. Whenever one more 11 counters are put on another non hydro creature, you control put a 11 counter on this guy. So the more you buff everyone else, this guy feels it, too. Heroic Intervention. There's a Johnny slicing through a net that's being thrown at him. Two for an instant. Permits you control gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. Everyone who ever touches green cards is going to want four of these. You're going to want to play set. It's just good. This is just really good. You may not run it in every format. You may not run it all the time. It's, it's good. It's really good. Might even be able to buy them cheap now. It's a core set, so it's probably been mass produced. Grab them. Grab them now while you can. Not sure if it's a reprint or if it's new, but grab them. Could have been. This is such waste of potential. Should have been Flash Death Touch. I'm here to kill you now, Mr. Bond. But no. Lost it. This is good artwork, but I think the lighting effects are a little too overdone. I think it's one of those less is more, or at least make it more pronounced, like there's just too much light coming through. It's not bad by any rate. Just a little constructive criticism on my part. I'm not an artist uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Uh-oh, I oh, see you saw this. Look at that special border back there. I'm so excited. Legion's Judgment 3. This looks like a knight card story type creature with power 4 or greater. Mm, it's a sorcery. Probably not going to put it in my knight deck. Garuk's Uprising. Green and 2. That is just a beautiful border. But, you know, green's my favorite color, so... Uh, when Garrick's Uprising enters the battlefield, if you control a creature with power 4 or greater, draw a card. Okay, pretty good. Creatures you control have trample. Alright, it's great. Wait, there's more. Whenever a creature with power 4 or greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Thank you, Mr. Garuk. May I have some more? Thrashing Brontodon, because we hate artifacts. Angelic Ascension, because who doesn't need more angels? And Garuk... Unleashed. Very fitting that we got a Grook. Oh, Goblin Wizard. Look, there's the Goblin Wizard with his big nose. All right, I'm going to put these guys side by side. Look, ah, he's just got fire. Here. A Grook Unleashed. He's just got way too many words. It's Grook. He's a green planeswalker. He's here. He means business. And we have his Uprising card in the same pack. 
Well, that's it for that stack. There are two more stacks to go, but I'll make different videos of those. Uh, feel free to go uh, have yourself some lunch, have a margarita delivered to you. Uh, go to work, stay safe, come back, watch another magic video. It doesn't have to be mine. Just have fun, share the hobby. We'll come back and we'll do these other packs. Stay safe.